So I'm asked all the time, Detective Mains, what can I do to keep my stuff off the internet? All my personal information. Well, I don't like that stuff out there. I don't want people to know my voting preference. I don't want people to know my cell phone number. I don't want people to know my address. I'm a private person. I don't want that stuff out there for people to take advantage of me. That's why I use Data Seal. Okay? It personally is the comprehensive data removal service that I trust. So use the link below to receive 5% off of your Data Seal subscription and protect you and your family. If you have concerns that your personal information is being exposed online, use Data Seal. It's the one that I trust and I use personally. So listen guys, there's a link in the bio and in the comment sections. Click on that link and you'll get 5% off of your subscription. So make sure you go ahead and do that. His fear of abandonment. I say that goes back to his childhood and his parents splitting up. His parents leaving him alone when he was a senior in high school for months. That's when he starts drinking. Hell, he went to class and started drinking. That's an issue, folks. Alcohol for him was a crutch to deal with his problems that he could not internalize. He couldn't make sense. He knew what he was doing was just not right. Killing, picking up gay men, being a homosexual, taking photographs, controlling, dominating, dismembering, killing, eating, all of that. He knows that's it's not normal. So how does he cope with it? He copes with it by drinking. But what else does the alcohol do? For him, it lowers his inhibitions. Right? Think of when you were younger, or if you're younger now, and you're watching this, when you go out to the bars. Guys, if you've ever had a one night stand, or you've picked up women at a bar, when do you do it? I'll tell you, two o'clock, last call. Everybody's drunk. Everybody's inhibitions are lowered. And sometimes you've woken up in the morning and said, oh my God, what did I do? Why? Alcohol. Dahmer used alcohol for those reasons. It gave him courage as well as as quashing. So, if he had not had alcohol in his life, would he have done this? Yes, I believe he would have. The trophies, not just the body parts, but the keeping of IDs, the taking of pictures. He says that the reason he did this, again, was to keep them with him. So he started keeping the trophies. Now, he, and again, he says it was because he wanted to keep them with him, but it's also for sexual gratification. I don't care what Jeffrey Dahmer says. He's minimizing that. He is using those photographs that he took on of his Polaroid, and he is masturbating to them. He is taking, he's taking the heads of the victims, storing them in his refrigerator. Yes, it's to keep them, but it's also to masturbate to them. Or do other things, like Ted Bundy did with the severed heads. I said about 78 being his first uh, kill. In 81, he was discharged from the army. Uh, and again, he doesn't kill until 80, 87. And he just said there wasn't an opportunity that presented itself. I do believe that in a way, but then again, nine years of something not presenting itself. Uh, maybe. I mean, I guess that's possible. 
But in 81, he's discharged. In 82, he's arrested for exposing himself. Now, I want you to see the pattern here, okay? In 86, he's arrested for masturbating in front of two boys. They charge him with indecent exposure. In 87, he kills the gentleman at the hotel, puts him in the suitcase. In a, again, in 87, he has another kill, another kill. In 88, he has an assault. In 89, he kills and begins keeping the body parts. You see how that has escalated. You think about how some serial killers will go from burglary, peeping Tom, rape, murder. It's an escalation. It's, hey, I did this. I'm comfortable with that. Maybe that doesn't get me off now as much as this. I'm going to start peering in their windows. Well, that's nice. That's getting me worked up. You know, I'm going to go in for the rape. Then it's the rape. Then that happens for a while. And then all of a sudden, that's not enough. Then we got to kill. And in Dahmer's case, the killing is not enough. Now we got to take photographs. The photographs isn't enough. It's a good high now, but I got to keep the body parts. That's working great. I'm going to build a satanic altar. Why I watch Exorcist 3. That's going good. I like that. I'm getting a good thrill. But you know what would be the ultimate thrill? To eat them. That's the way they're with me forever. I have a part of them in me. That thrill from that. He's always trying to escalate and get the greater high. I equate that to drug users. If there's any former or current drug users that are watching this, think about the first time that you did heroin or you did cocaine. You're always chasing that first high. This is the same thing. You're just trying to get a little bit better each time. That's what I see in Jeffrey Dahmer. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I want to cover about him. The, the time gaps, okay? 1987 to 19, or 78 to 87. And then it's every year. Then it's every month. And then it's every few days that he kills. See how that compulsion just it's it's almost maddening you can't get enough again I go back to Ted Bundy and you think of what he did that final night or at least that final stretch where the Chi Omega house and then Kimberly Leach I'm missing the, the victim in between where he went from the Chi Omega right to their house. And then eventually Kimberly Leach. It wasn't, he, it was just a constant urge now. I can't quash it anymore. Nor do I want to. That's the big thing. Especially with Dahmer and Bundy. They know that it's wrong and they try to quash it down. But then after a while... They're like, to hell with it. I don't care if it's wrong. I'm just going to do it. Because it's what comes natural to me. That's what's happening here with Dahmer. He goes from years in between killings to many months, to months, to weeks, to days.